welcome to a series of lessons on photography. This particular lesson that you are going to watch now is about the traditional chemical based photography done on film. I'm Amrita Ghoshkumar and the subject expert for this lesson is Mr. Vinay Shankar who teaches at the University School of Mass Communication in Indraprasth University, New Delhi. What is photographic film? Photographic film is an important material used in traditional chemical based photography. It is used for recording photographic images with the help of a camera. Anybody who has done photography, professional or otherwise, with the slightly old fashioned film cameras is familiar with the photographic film. Photographic film performs the function of recording as well as storing the image. Photographic films have been available in numerous variations of size, sensitivity, use and so on. Let us now know a little more about the photographic film. A strip of transparent plastic film forms the base of photographic film. On one side of this base is a coat of gelatin emulsion containing light sensitive silver halides. These silver halides are in the form of tiny crystals. The resolution, sensitivity and the contrast of the photographed image depends on the quality of these tiny particles. This emulsion responds to any exposure to light. That is why it is called photosensitive. If it remains exposed to light, it will slowly turn dark. This is due to a minute chemical change happening in response to exposure to light. When this film is used inside a camera, a very short exposure is given to the image formed by a camera lens. This produces a slight chemical change proportional to the amount of light absorbed by each crystal. The process leaves an invisible latent image in the emulsion on the film. This latent image is later developed chemically into a fully visible photograph. Cameras and films have been around for more than 100 years. They have been used both for still photography and movies or motion picture photography. Many of us feel that there is something magical about the whole process. We are fascinated by visuals and a picture really does paint a thousand words for us. Despite advent and popularization of digital imaging technologies, film is still considered the best way to capture still and moving pictures because of its incredible ability to record detail in a very stable form. A typical can of film roll contains a long strip of plastic that has coatings on each side. The heart of the film is called the base, which is actually a transparent plastic material. Its thickness is about 0.025 millimeter, which is about four thousandths to seven thousandths of an inch. The shiny side of the film is its backside. It has various coatings that are important to ensure smooth physical handling of the film in manufacture and in processing. The photochemical coating is on the other side of the film. This side could contain up to 20 or even more coated individual layers. Their collective thickness is less than one thousandth of an inch. The voluminous component here is a very special binder, the gelatin, that holds the imaging components and chemicals together. All the layers coated on the transparent film do not form images. They perform the function of filtering light and controlling the chemical reactions during processing. The imaging layers as we have discussed, contain sub-micron sized grains of silver halide crystals that act as the photon detectors. These crystals are the most important component of photographic film. They undergo a photochemical reaction when they are exposed to various forms of 
electromagnetic radiation, which is light. It's important to know that in addition to visible light, the silver halide grains can also be sensitized to infrared radiation. The characteristics of these crystals form many of the criteria for categorization of photographic films. Categorization can be done on various bases, ranging from their physical size to their sensitivity to color response. Before we go into the details of different types, let us go through a brief history of the photographic film. In the initial years of photography, different kinds of media were being used. Early photography did not use any film at all. In a process, light-sensitive chemicals were formed on the surface of a silver-plated copper sheet. Another process, known as calotype, produced paper negatives. However, slowly everyone arrived at a standard medium. By the 1850s, most of the photographers were utilizing thin glass plates coated with photographic emulsion. This medium suffered from the disadvantage of being fragile and heavy. But in those days, its optical quality was much better than that of plastics. In fact, there was a cost advantage as well. As plastics became cheaper and of better quality, it replaced glass in most of the photography applications. However, glass plates remained in use for scientific and other specialized applications. George Eastman marketed the first flexible photographic roll in 1885. Initially, the base was paper. The transparent plastic roll film was introduced to the market in 1889. It was made from a highly flammable material called nitrocellulose. The word celluloid came from this. This film is also known as nitrate film. A much safer cellulose acetate film was introduced by Kodak in 1908. It was also called safety film as it was much safer from fire hazards as compared to the earlier nitrate film. Besides the safety advantage, it lagged behind the nitrate film on various other counts. Nitrate film was cheaper, tougher and even more transparent as well. Though only marginally so. These other advantages of nitrate film were enough to keep it in demand and in production. Nitrate film remained in business for theatrical motion pictures till 1951, when it was finally discontinued by the industry. So, the photographic film, the chemical-based recording material, has been used for recording still and motion picture images since 1880s. This system evolved more than 150 years ago and has been going through various improvements ever since. In recent years, its use has declined with improvements in digital photographic technologies. The digital medium has become more popular because of its cost advantages, but film medium continues to be used along with the digital. Photographic materials are coated with crystals of silver halide, usually silver bromides. The chemicals in the coating go through a minute change when they are struck by light energy particles. But the changes are so small that it is not visible even through a microscope. Inside the camera, the film is given a very brief exposure to the image formed by the lens and that creates just enough reaction. The maximum change is in the bright areas of the picture and a minimal change is seen in the dark areas. But all this change is in latent form. Later on in the processing stage, chemicals go on to work on the latent image, leading to a visible black chemical image. When deciding on a roll of film for one's camera, one has a lot of choices. Films that have the word colour in their name are generally used to produce color prints that can be held in hand and viewed by reflected light. 
the negatives that are returned with prints are the exposures that were made in one's camera. Film rolls that have the word chrome in their names produce a color transparency or slides that require some form of projector for viewing. Alternatively, they can be viewed with the help of a light box and a magnifying glass. In this case, the return slides are the actual film that was exposed in the camera. Once you have decided on prints or slides, the next major decision is the film speed. Often, the relative speed rating of the film is part of its name. ISO and ASA speed ratings are also generally printed prominently on the box. A higher number means a faster film. Faster means increased light sensitivity. You would prefer such film when you are photographing quickly moving objects and you want them to be in focus. Or when you want to take a picture in dimly lit surroundings without adding any additional lights. The trade-off when using a fast film is loss of grain. A fast film produces images having coarse grain and slow speed film will give a fine grain image but will require more light to record the image. A slow speed film is desirable for portrait photography where you can control the lighting of the subject. The subject is stationary and you are likely to want a large print from the negative. The finer silver halide grains in such films produce the best results. Then there are categorizations such as tungsten balanced or daylight balanced. A tungsten balanced film is meant to be used indoors where the primary source of light is from tungsten filament light bulbs. Since the visible illumination coming from a light bulb is different than from the sun or daylight, the spectral sensitivity of the film must be modified to produce a pleasing picture. This is most important when using a transparency film. So, films are of different kinds. They can be categorized on various bases. Each kind has specific applications. The biggest and the most easily understood distinction is between color and black and white films. Another such difference is of size. Let us now go into details of various kinds of films. We will start with discussing different sizes in which film rolls and sheets are available. There are certain features that are common to all films. One of these features is film size. The films are given different codes on the basis of their width. Film termed or size coded as 110 film is 16 millimeters in width. This single perforation film comes in a cartridge and is designed for minute format small cameras. The picture width on the negative is 13 millimeter. Several consumer cameras with limited controls and a user-friendly interface utilize this film. The APS film is 24 millimeter wide and comes in self-loading cartridges. The film has perforations on one edge and the picture size on the film is 17 mm by 30 mm. A single cartridge gives 15 or 25 or 40 exposures. APS stands for Advanced Photo Systems. This film was developed mainly for use of amateur users and was marketed under different brand names by different manufacturers. 35mm film for still photography was introduced in 1934. Its balance between compact size and high quality made it the most preferred film for most photographers. It has been the most widely used film format for a long time. Due to its popularity and widespread use, a wide range of color and black and white emulsions are marketed in this format. Roll film is coded as 120 film. Its width is 62 millimeters. This was the most popular still photography film till the 35 millimeter film took over. 
number of pictures and frame size depends on the picture format of the camera being used. 220 coded film is of same width as the 120 film. But a thinner base allows for twice the length and exposure on same spool size. 135 film and 120 film is also made available in large can sizes for use with special film bags. Photographic film is also marketed in the form of sheets. The sheet film is loaded and exposed one at a time. Therefore, each individual exposure can be handled and treated separately during processing. Sheet films give much larger image area and are mostly used by professionals. Sheet films come in packs of 10, 25 and 50. The standard sizes are 4 into 5 inch, 9 into 12 centimeter, 5 into 7 inch and 10 into 8 inch. Besides, the roll and sheet films, instant print sheet material is also used by photographers. Instant print sheets come in various sizes, 3 one fourth into 4 one fourth or a square 3 one fourth into 3 one fourth are widely used. 5 into 4 and 10 into 8 are used in large format cameras. These are used mostly by professionals for previewing and proofing their lighting and composition before recording it on film. One important criteria for categorization of films is film speed or the sensitivity of the film to light. It is denoted by an emulsion speed figure. This is indicated on the film pack as an ISO rating. ISO stands for International Standards Organization. This combines earlier prevalent America-based ASA ratings and European DIN ratings. The first ISO figure doubles with each doubling of light sensitivity and the second number which is also marked with a degree sign increases by 3 with each doubling of sensitivity. The first ISO figure forms the part of film's brand name. A film which is relatively insensitive will have a correspondingly lower speed index. It will require more exposure to light to produce the same image density as a more sensitive film. Therefore, in common parlance, it is termed as slow film. Highly sensitive films are correspondingly termed fast films. In both digital and film photography, the reduction of exposure corresponding to use of higher sensitivities generally leads to reduced image quality. The reduced image quality will be reflected in coarser film grain or higher image noise. In brief, the higher the sensitivity, the grainier the image will be. A film speed rating is based in a standard conditions of lighting, typical exposure times and processing. A lesser number or rating like 25, 50 or 64 indicates lower sensitivity and a higher number like 1600 or 3200 is for higher sensitivity or fast film. Ratings like 100, 125 and 200 are considered medium speed. Medium speed films are used in most of the applications. Film speed is traditionally linked with graininess and sharpness. Manufacturers need to increase the size of silver halides to improve the speed. This leads to a more coarse grain in image. So typically, the choice of a film is a trade-off between speed and image quality. Fast films are inherently grainier than slow films. The fineness and coarseness of an image matters more when image needs to be enlarged to a big size. Films can also be classified on the basis of their response to colors. Films are sensitized to all or some colors of the spectrum. Black and white films that have been sensitized to the entire color spectrum in their manufacturing are labeled as panchromatic film. Some black and white films are made insensitive to the red end of the spectrum. These are known as the 
orthochromatic films. This kind of film is useful for photographing black and white pictures or drawings which do not involve any color. This film can be handled safely under red illumination in a dark room. This film is used for certain medical, forensic and scientific photography. Color films have multiple layers of emulsion and it uses three different kinds of color sensitization. The top layer is sensitive to blue only. The second layer is sensitive to blue and green. A yellow filter between these two layers restricts the blue light. The lowest layer is sensitive to red only. So the three layers respond to three different colors specifically. The topmost layer responds to blue, the mid layer responds to green and the bottom layer responds to red. The relative sensitivity of the three layers in precisely controlled to give accurate color reproduction when the subject is illuminated by daylight or flash and the color temperature is in 5000 Kelvin and 6000 Kelvin range. Some films are also balanced for 3200 Kelvin tungsten lamps. These have a slightly slower red sensitive layer which leads to a correct reproduction of subjects illuminated by red rich tungsten lamps emitting a warm light having color temperature of 3200 Kelvin. Most of the black and white films render a negative image in black silver. The latent image obtained after exposure in the camera is strengthened into visible black silver during development. Remaining halides are removed to leave a negative image on color gelatin. Negative image means that highlights appear the darkest and shadows are the lightest. These black and white negative films come in various film speed and sizes. Some black and white films are made with high contrast emulsion. They give image with few or no grays at all. The image is composed of dense blacks and clear whites. This kind of film has to be processed in proper contrast developer. This kind of high contrast film is known as a line film. There is a more extreme version of high contrast film known as lith film. These films are used for photographing printed texts, plans, pen and ink drawings and so on. These kinds of subjects contain only pure black and pure white and need to be reproduced as that only. However, one can also use this film to change a full tone image with grays to stark high contrast image. This kind of film is often orthochromatic for easy darkroom handling. Besides normal and contrast films, black and white films are also manufactured as slide films and instant print materials. Now let us move towards color films which like the black and white films are available in a number of variations. Main amongst them are negative films, reversal films and instant films. Color film records the brightness variation as well as the hue or the color. Each color film has a particular color balance. Color film is both sensitive to and records both value that is dark and light and hue which are colors. Color film comes in both negative that is to make prints from and positive to make transparencies or slides from. As we discussed, while explaining color response of films, an important characteristic of color film is its color balance. This is the temperature or color of light the film is designed to use under or use with. The two major types are daylight of 5000 degree Kelvin and tungsten of 3200 degree Kelvin. Daylight film is by far the most common. It is for use under daylight and also more strobe or flash. Tungsten film is used under studio lights which use tungsten filaments. These are similar to but not the same as regular incandescent light. Using daylight film under tungsten lamps will give you a warm cast of golden hue. Using tungsten film under daylight gives you a heavy cyan cast. 
using either under fluorescent light generally leave a green cast on the image. Films, whether color or black and white, are designed to either produce a negative image or a positive. Negative film or print film, when developed, yields transparent negatives with the light and dark areas. If color film is used, then colors are inverted to their opposites. This type of film is designed to be printed onto photographic paper. This is done with the help of an enlarger or in some cases by contact printing. The paper is then itself developed. This process leads to a second inversion which restores light, shade and color to their normal appearance. Color processing is more complex and temperature sensitive than black and white processing. But the wide availability of commercial color processing services has made its use easier for the consumers. On the other hand, there has been a scarcity of service for black and white developing and printing. This has prompted the design of some black and white films which are processed in exactly the same way as standard color film but produce a black and white image. Color negative films have a suffix color added to their brand name. For example, Fuji color. It helps to easily identify a film as a color negative film. Color reversal film produces positive transparencies or dire positives. These kind of films include the suffix chrome in their brand. Elite chrome or Fuji chrome are some examples. Chrome films or color reversal films have to be given a special reversal processing. The positive transparencies produced after processing are inspected with the help of a magnifying lens and a light box. They can also be mounted in small metal, plastic or cardboard frames for use in a slide projector or slide viewer. With this mounting, they are called slides. Reversal film is often marketed as slide film. Large format color reversal sheet film is used by some professional photographers typically to originate very high resolution imagery for digital scanning into color separations for mass photochemical reproduction. Photographic prints can be produced from reversal film transparencies. But this is usually more expensive and complex than printing from a negative. So films can be categorized on the basis of their size, their color response and their sensitivity. Films can be color or black and white and they can also be negative or reversal. We have discussed most of the categories of films. However, there are several other kinds of films designed for special purposes. These include infrared film, x-ray film, chromogenic film, etc. These categorizations help us to select the most suitable material for a particular project. With advancements in technology, the digital technology has provided us with cheaper and versatile options for capturing images through the camera. As the digital photography started offering better quality images and at lower prices, it became a medium of priority for most of the photographers. However, the chemical-based film and photography techniques still have a niche following. The high resolution and rich detail provided by film is still unmatched and finds application in specialized tasks. So hope this lesson and this information helps you to choose the suitable film for your application. Thank you and see you again in the next class.